to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is our weekly show where we bring you the latest news in all things television and talk about the week that was in TV. Joining me this afternoon is Josh McCuga. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Collider TV Talk. So happy to be here. Uh, we're a day late because yesterday in the United States, we celebrated Memorial Day. So thank you to everybody who serves in our military service for doing what you do. You're the real heroes here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you guys, we got a great show planned for today. I'm growing this beard out in honor of my Pittsburgh Penguins, who are currently up one in the Stanley Cup Finals. Once that is over, I will shave, and David will grow his out after that. <laughs> he hasn't signed on yet, but he's really excited about it. <laughs> also, here is David Griffin. Oh, yeah. I, I, got, I got an out second. This is new. I wasn't expecting my announcement. Thank you. Um, so... I hope you had a great Memorial Day. Let me know. Let us know if you watch any Memorial Day themed television shows. You know a lot of the like the war movies and television shows like Band of Brothers. I Ooh, saw it was yeah. on sale. You know you could rent it or watch it. You know on HBO Go. So what's your favorite uh, thing to watch on Memorial Day weekend? <laughs> <laughs> that was Christian Harloff. We just got something. we got laughter bombed by Harloff. <laughs> Where was he? That Super just, professional. That me so bad. I know that was like a ghost in here or something. Yeah, that was terrifying. Also, here is Sasha Pearl Raver. That's right. I'm so grateful we had the extra day because there was so much TV for me to catch up on. We got a lot to talk about, kids. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots. Lots. And if you noticed, uh, Sasha and I are both wearing blue. Totally unplanned, but we look fantastic. Twenty. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, Sinead, what's up first? <laughs> See what I, did? I was calling her Sinead last week. Now I'm calling you, Sasha. Perfect. Whatever. Same okay. Hit right. it, Sinead. As long as you're not asking me to grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> In their continuing plot to take over television and the movie world, Netflix announced this week that starting in September, they will be the exclusive streaming home for all Disney properties. That means that beginning with 2016 theatrical releases, titles from Disney, Walt Disney Animation, Pixar, Marvel Studios, Disney Nature, and Lucasfilm will be made available to Netflix subscribers to watch during that first pay TV time period, which occurs after the digital Blu-ray and DVD releases, an option that in previous years would have gone to HBO or Stars. Josh, does this move excite you? Yeah, I mean, I think that what we got, and I mean, I subscribe to everything, so I have stars, HBO. It's not a huge deal for me. What's nice is that now, because in, in no offense to HBO, but I never know what movie is on their on demand and what is on, like what shows are on their on demand. I have to go to the HBO Go app. Uh, stars is the same way. A lot of times they have stuff like in there and they don't have it in there and I'll see it one week and be like, oh, I'm going to go back and watch that movie and I'll go back a week later and it's gone. There's no like, it would be great if TV, if your TV channel would send you push notifications mm -hmm. and was like, you have two more days left to see Star Ooh. Wars Force Awakens 7, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm psyched that that Netflix is and their plot to take over the world as far as entertainment goes is amazing, like one step at a time. So I, I've always been the guy that's like, I just want as soon as they release the movie that, and they're like, here, it's on digital download, Blu-ray, DVD, and it's on every streaming service. Just let it all go. I know that'll never happen because Blu-ray sales are a big thing. But who buys Blu-rays anymore? Only like collectors buy it. So the people are going to buy it anyway, right? Because all of us, the rest of us are just trending towards streaming anyway. So I think eventually we'll get to that streaming property. But now everything is just in that one space. I'm like, oh, Netflix, might as well watch Star Wars there. I'm just catching a little Star Wars, maybe a little of this. I'm pumped. Here's the thing I wonder, are they going, because they're bumping up the service to 10 bucks. Yeah. And now I wonder if they're going to mm. bump it even higher maybe. But I mean, this like really proves my nerdiness. The thing I'm most excited about is like, Disney Nature, <laughs> the Disney Nature movies are going to be available because the Disney Nature movies, they're so good. Like there was the monkey one, the Tina. What accent is that? I was about to ask, what accent is that? Max had an accent. Oh no! <laughs> Your Cleveland one. I just gonna say you saw the Cleveland. Well, what, yeah. Oh no! Oh, no no no! no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> It's gonna be great, but it's crazy. I mean, talk about like what people are talking. Griffin got a mustache. <laughs> oh no! Okay, so going back to it, like people were talking coming out of Cannes about how Amazon is really trying to corner the market in films, and like I'm really excited to see what they do with Neon Demon. But I think that Netflix is like, what? Where can we make the most money? Yeah. There you go. Let's go talk to Disney. What well, about you, Dave? Hopefully it'll help because people know where to go now. Because I know for a while it was on Stars, yeah. And I subscribed to Stars through my Amazon Prime account. So flesh and Bone. I, yeah, Flesh and Bone, Black Sales. So you, I can see what's available. But I think now that's on Netflix, it'll, they'll probably advertise it a little bit better so people yeah. know where to go. I'm excited because I'm a huge Star Wars Rebels fan. Uh, so that'll be the home of Star Wars Rebels, I assume. Because I don't yeah. think Star Wars Rebels, outside of the Disney XD app, or if you buy it on Amazon or iTunes, is available to stream mm -hmm. if you have a subscription service. So I think that's going to be great to be able to watch Star Wars Rebels, which hopefully we'll talk about uh, when it premieres in the fall. I am just waiting for the moment when Netflix starts buying other 
stations, oh, other yeah. channels, other networks, mm -hmm. because they spent last year alone, spent $6 billion in original programming. It's a lot of money. Yeah. $6 billion uh, for, for original programming that people are consuming and mass. And it's not like Netflix every day is just like kind of steadily increasing. Like my parents just got a Netflix subscription and they don't even know how to really use a computer. Like we got it because everybody <laughs> talks about it. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that works. Uh, when you come home, could you show us how to use the Netflix? I was like, oh, yeah. you'd sign in and then it's you press it. It's real <laughs> easy. But uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that fact when, when you can actually click on your TV because I'm still, again, I'm not a cable cutter. You click on, you see the Netflix channel and there's like Netflix 1, Netflix 2, Netflix TV, Netflix this, and you can on demand all your Netflix, even though everybody's like, well, that's Apple TV, that's Roku. But if you are not a cable cutter like me, to have that Netflix option on your TV, on your pay cable, that is going to change the game. I think we'll eventually get there. At least I hope so. Sinead, what's next? HBO's Westworld, the series that seemed like the Sisyphus of the HBO universe, finally got a release window in late fall of 2016. Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy wrote the script with Nolan directing the pilot and finale of the project based on the 1973 Yule Brenner James Brolin film Westworld. It takes place at a resort set in the future where guests pay to act out elaborate fantasies in different time periods run by sophisticated human-like androids. HBO hasn't released an exact date, but they're finally pulling the trigger on the much-hyped series and not holding off until 2017 like early reports had expected. David, will HBO's Westworld and its fall release appease our post Game of Thrones hangover? We well, you know this is a tough question to answer because it depends on who you are. If you're me and you like shows like Vinyl, you're appeased already. You're already happy. You're just living up on cloud nine. But you know, if you're Sasha or Josh, then HBO's struggling right now. They need to find some better programming. So for me, I'm already appeased, but this is going to appease me even more. Because the, the cast, the, is, the cast incredible. is incredible. Yeah. We got Anthony Hopkins. We got Ed Harris. We have Cyclops. James Marsden. Cyclops is up in there. Come on, yeah. Cyclops uh, is back. The girl from uh, Rachel Raising Wood. Hope. Rachel no, Wood. The girl from Raising oh, Hope. Uh, 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 Shannon Wood. Yeah. Woodward. No. Woodward. Uh, no, 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 no People who have money go to this, uh, I don't know, Disneyland for adults, and you have some themes. There's a West World. There's like a, a Roman world. There's all these California places. Adventure California Adventure. Yeah, you can basically go <laughs> and just kind of live out your fantasies. You know, you can have sex and, you know, do, you know, with sex bots. There's always sex bots. Got to have sex bots. Of course. Um, Obviously. What's so, the future without a sex But bot? this is going to go, I think, a lot deeper. <laughs> I mean, it's going to explore, like, the birth of artificial intelligence and all this kind of thing. So, I mean, I'm so pumped about it. This is right up my alley. This is sci-fi, and it's a Western combined. I mean, how much better can you get? And there is no law in HBO right now, right, Josh? You'd agree with me. So uh, many good shows right now. Uh, 100%. Thank you. 100%. <laughs> SCR drop it. So. Well, here's what I think. I mean, you have here two of my favorite genres. When True Grit came out, I want to say like four or five years ago, I was like, oh, we're going to start seeing westerns. We're going to start seeing the rebirth of westerns. It's such a fantastic genre mm -hmm. to imbue that with a sci-fi edge. And I'm hoping this goes kind of in that like ex machina vein. I think this is going to be fantastic. Yes, the cast is great. I actually was talking to John Schnepp about this because me and my friends are planning on rewatching the film and Schnepp was like eh, it doesn't really hold up but that is the perfect property mm -hmm. when you have a pedigree when you have a great underlying concept and then you have a film that maybe has sort of fallen behind what we expect now from our entertainment I am so grateful to see that this is finally living because there was a chance that yeah. they were going to shelve this thing mm -hmm. and that was making me nervous now with those nerves do you think there's any particular reason that there was a, they were holding it back? Well, they I when I did the news on this, they said basically that they stopped production so that they could catch up with all of the writing. They wanted to get ahead of the writing, which made it seem like they just wanted to finish the whole series before before the continuing. The true detective did. Well, yeah. Which is what yeah. usually HBO does. Typically when Game of Thrones is done, when we watch episode one, they're finished. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Obama's got the episodes. He's watching them already. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're done. That's how HBO does it as opposed right. to we're watching like a CW show or, you know, ABC Family. You know, they're, they're still shooting episodes as right. we're watching. So, I think, I'm not worried. There's always reshoots. There's always delays. Even we're talking about on Movie Talk earlier, they're talking about the Rogue One delays right. and everything. So, it's just a part of the system. I'm not too worried about that. Me neither. You know, uh, the Westworld, I don't know a ton about it. I'm going to go watch 
watch the 1973 film because I would like to get a little more backstory. I know there was, it's it was, short and sweet. You can yeah. just fly through it. It's really and easy it's to watch. Future, there was a, another movie, Future World, right? And yeah, they was, made some sequels. You'll, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I'm really excited to see this because I don't think that all these this cast would step onto this project if it wasn't something pretty spectacular, right? It also reminds me growing up because my dad loved Westerns, but we didn't have enough money for like all the guns. So my dad would just like make, he'd be like, this lightsaber is now a Western <laughs> sword. Use this. And like we had like tasers as like Western guns and it was like, yeah, it's a Western. And my dad loved Western so much. So the fact that they're, they, they, they're combining them both uh, is so, it's it's a ton of fun. And really, have we seen a Western on TV since Deadwood? I mean, like, Hell on Wheels is decent, yeah. I guess. Mm. But it's, yeah, it's okay. Mm. And Deadwood was, I thought, canceled way too early and a very, very slow TV show. I think this one is going to tackle both of those once that we, like you you guys both just said, it's it's uh, it's really kind of hitting on both. I'm I am psyched. excited to see HBO yeah. expand their genres. Yeah. You know, I know yeah. I think that's the one thing I want to see from them more is science fiction. They haven't really gone down that way. We have Game of Thrones with the fantasy aspect. Right. Let's see some science fiction now. I think that the one thing Game of Thrones did really well for HBO was prove that they can spend big budgets on uh, like an expansive universe kind of mm-hmm. thing like Lord of the Rings and get the return that they wanted, which I think they were a little apprehensive about because if you look at the budgets from the first season, of Game of Thrones, they are nothing like what they are for right now, and nothing for what we're going to see in six and seven. So, that being said, I think we're going to get some unbelievably dynamic TV. Well, when you talk about like bang for your buck, I feel like Anthony Hopkins sort of is in that Gene Hackman thing of every single thing he's in yeah. is better yeah. for his presence. So to be able to see him once a week, I personally cannot wait for. And I know we haven't we haven't talked about it, um, but there's that new uh, film that's out on Stars called The Dresser. With Ian McKellen oh, yeah. and Anthony Hopkins, which oh, yeah. is supposed to be incredible, and I know that's it's not television. I mean, it's on Stars, but it, it's a film that, that they're We're doing, so it's supposed to gray area on TV. Yeah, it's, here, it's like, always yeah. weird how to do that, but yeah. um, it look, looks fantastic. So I think Anthony Hopkins, he still has it. He still okay. got it all day. He still got it all day. Yeah. Um, the name is Shannon Woodward. Shannon Woodward. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So and, close. Yeah. And real quick before I move on, but since I did so much reading this week on this show, um, the people that signed up to do like extra work or got selected had to all sign releases on set of Westworld that they would be okay with genital to genital touching and extreme sexual situations. They had to like sign papers and papers and papers of like just saying it's okay to basically touch touch ugly and just as ugly. engage Extras? engage in the most sexual of circumstances as as an extra remember that was a big deal when true detective season two was filming and we heard about the report about the orgy scene you yeah. know spoiler yeah. uh that they had hired porn stars to be in that orgy scene yeah. so this is hbo you know but they've always kind of pushed the boundaries in that regard so you know we're gonna see boobs yeah. Ooh, we're yeah. Gonna see yeah. a whole lot of more than boobs yeah. i will That's say we crazy. watched <laughs> i was watching game of thrones and i love HBO, any of those shows, when the first part pops up and there's no nudity, everybody's like, ah! Oh, <laughs> yeah. Why are we paying you for HBO? Watch Banshee, everyone. It's nudity, strong sexual content. Ding, ding, ding. Wait, like, this yeah. is crazy. I am I am fascinated by this because, you know, you still go on Cinemax, Skinemax, after Soft like court. 1 p.m. Yeah. Or 1 a.m. No, <laughs> and like, 1 yeah. p.m. <laughs> yeah. And then there's all these rules of like patches and socks and yeah. you're not allowed to yes. touch certain things. Right. And, Genital Whoa. to genital. My my buddy, this is kind <laughs> Westworld. of Westworld. <laughs> <What? laughs> genital to genital. Watch it this fall. We should do a podcast called Genital to Genital the Westworld <laughs> Podcast. Awesome. Um, my buddy, when he first moved out to LA, worked on a soft core set, and they had to do like the same things, like the extras, and they were like, "Are you comfortable wa- with watching genital to genital?" Though there will not be penetration, and afterwards, like a lot of the actors be like, ah, I just like it better when it's penetration. You can actually wow. get into it. I was like, Well, all right, oh. man. There we go. Sinead, what's next? What all right, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, what'd you work on set? What was that? <laughs> I'm Joey from Friends in that episode. I was trying to get copies, but I couldn't because people are having sex on it. That's <laughs> oh, so good. All right. In cancellation uh. and renewal news, Limitless at CBS appears to be the last victim post upfronts. FX says the Americans will end with season five in 2017 and season six in 2018. And during a Hollywood Reporter discussion with HBO's new head of production, Casey Boyce, it appears that we may never, ever see a True Detective season three. Sasha, is HBO giving up on True Detective too early and does the cancellation of Limitless bode well for all the movie adaptations coming this fall? I mean, between Limitless getting canceled, uh, Rush Hour, and the preview we saw for Lethal Weapon, I feel like movie to TV adaptations or something. Oh, and let's not forget about Minority Report that was on last year. Like there's a, this might not be an area that we want to invest as much time and energy into. As far as True Detective goes, I feel like 
True Detective season one, one of the great television offerings we've had in the last yeah. five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And had it stood alone, it would have been something that had lived in the pantheon of like all time greats. It's almost like how Curb Your Enthusiasm just isn't on anymore. We were never given like a last season, a cancellation or anything like that. Had they done that with True Detective, like we're probably gonna do it again sometime. Like Fukunaga's like, I'd love to revisit it. Like four or five years from now, we're still like, we would love a True Detective season two or whatever yeah. it is, even if they call it just like True Detective again or whatever. Sure. But they I, ruined it correct. with season two. With season two, season two was so bad on every level. The it, casting, the writing, the direction. You disagree? Well, I don't totally disagree. I think Numbers it were still solid, which is interesting. Well, numbers, numbers don't I, speak to quality. Oh, no, no of course, of, of course. No, yeah. Yeah. I, we've talked about it, David, you and I, that it's not, it wasn't awful. It was just so bad compared to season one that it really soured it hard yeah like I, I, love colin, one, I love colin farrell's character yeah. i thought every, I, every time he was on screen i was paying attention but colin farrell's here i, I loved how he, he did his character yeah, but like, would you have watched the show if season one hadn't existed if they had only offered up question, yeah. season two would it have passed your three episode test no no it wouldn't no i would have stopped yeah right yeah. so i think that there's also that they we need all watch that going Come please on, tell me please give me something and then the, that last yeah. episode happened and i was like you <laughs> so I didn't even, I didn't even yeah. finish it. And the good yeah. thing is, though, oh, we know that you. we know that Pizzolatto is staying at HBO, so he may develop something else. Which and they, is a, that's, that's what a good they said thing. in this this yeah. this report. Yeah. Was that's that, a good thing. Yeah, you know, it may never. True Detective season three because of such it was such a big blowback, and we are not the only people that say this mm -hmm. that Pizzolatto would like to come and do something that isn't True Detective, something on his own, uh, something maybe in the same genre, just not name it True Detective because. You know, it's honestly, it's like you, you, your high school sweetheart was the most beautiful girl in the world. You married her and then she cheated got on fat. you. She got, she got and then fat. It's okay. She got, fat, she got whatever. fat. She got ugly. And you <laughs> oh, went back. No. You, you kept telling yourself that she was, I'm going to get hate on so much on this. Again. I know. I love it. You I tried and tried to you're... go the soft route and you threw me under the bus. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, I just loved it. And she got fat. Analogies. Then you said she got ugly. <laughs> Your analogies are like, okay, so imagine you're Well, Josh goes just, dark, man. It's been going dark. Everybody wait, wait, up. where were you going to go with this, though? No, so now I'm just saying, because then you, you it's, it's now. like scenes from an Italian restaurant, right? You can never go back there again, right? You want to go back to the green, but you can never go back there again. So you you created this beautiful thing in, in all reality, and then you think, like, oh, I'm going to go back, and it's going to have the same memories, and it's not. It's just not the same show. It's not as good. It's nowhere near as good, and you ruin it for everybody. So really more what it's like is you banged the prom queen on prom night. She was super hot, and then you see her again on Tinder 20 years later. You guys go out for a drink, and you're like, this is not as good as I remember whoa, it. Whoa, whoa. But all I know is this. Whoa. True Detective, I don't know that I want to see another show from Nick Pasolato or however we pronounce his last name, because I think the reason the first season was good was not because of him. I think it was because of the casting. I think it was because of Fukunaga. I don't know. I think it was his idea. You should but give him a second a, chance. I think we should give him a second chance. No, this would be a third chance. I gave him a second chance on True Detective season two. That's when he boned me mm. badly in the wrong way. Mm. <laughs> and as far Such as the Americans, <laughs> as far as the Americans ending after it, like two more seasons, like that's not really a cancellation. They're like, we're giving you two more seasons. And it well, they're like, we'll do that because we've been doing the show great this but, whole time. That's why we love networks though, like FX and HBO, because they do give their writers and showrunners a chance. You yeah. know, unlike a lot of networks, you just get canceled or the shows air in their incorrect order. If you're gonna fail, <laughs> HBO will let you fail all the way. They, they don't really remove a show early, like, uh, it's three episodes in, we're taking it out. Like they rarely let you finish your, happen. rarely does that happen. Rarely. Let you finish your story, which is, I appreciate that about HBO. Yeah, I, th I mean, I'm one of the few people out there that watches The Americans. I love that show. Uh, I'm this, behind, but it's a great show. It yeah, is. It is good. It, this season has been really. It's it's a slow moving show. If you guys, if you guys want something that's like action packed, the first couple seasons I think to draw people in, but now it's getting to this slow, like beautifully dynamic narrative story about family and spy. It's like really it's so done. much more tense now. Yeah. Like before, oh, you had more action, but now you like you the entire episode. episode is just agita, mm -hmm. yeah. just like, <gasps> yeah. but in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if you guys aren't watching The Americans, get on it. They, there was a really nice piece done by Collider.com this week about how they nail the teenage angst so well mm. because uh, I love Paige, the kids. I yeah, love the kids. Yeah. Because rarely are kids done well on TV, especially mm -hmm. teens. Like the teens in Homeland were the worst. That daughter in Homeland was the worst. And the son just was like, Dad, why are you a terrorist? Like it was so <laughs> bad. That, that show, Teenage, was so bad. Other than that, the show is great. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, we are going to go into so last man. week. We had the extreme, extreme pleasure of having Anya Buchstein here in studio. 
you guys know her. Uh, she was in the episode of Game of Thrones. She played Kinvara, uh, one of the red priestesses. She talks to Tyrion Lannister in the Temple of Marine about what she can do. She also mentions how, uh, you know, the wiener is lopped off and what he was thinking during it. I don't want to give too much away if you haven't seen it's that part scene. of Game of Thrones. But mm -hmm. uh, here's a little snippet of an interview we have with Anya Buchstein. Uh, you guys can actually check out the whole uh, 10 plus minute interview on Collider Video after this is released. But here's a little snippet for you guys right now. So how old do, is your character? Do you know how old you are? You have no idea. No. Do you know what the penis said when it got thrown on the fire? <laughs> yeah, what did the penis say? What did the penis say? say when it got thrown on the fire? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Okay, I heard a theory. If you were a guessing person, <laughs> if let's just put you in a penis, what would what would you scream as a penis on the fire? Please no. <laughs> yes, that's so that's so true. I guess so. Very true. Well, yeah, I think I might say I wonder thing. because I heard a theory, and I don't know if this theory is even close to true, and I don't know if you know if this theory is true, that your character is able, like Bran, to warg, and you can go into other people, and maybe you were speaking as like another character and you're one of the voices that can be heard throughout time. So maybe you're forcing the hand of history a little bit to get Daenerys to the throne. Wow, I have no idea. <laughs> But you know what's cool is that people make up these theories about that's you and great. you've been on TV yeah. for like 10 minutes. I think that's what makes the show such a hit and the fact that you can imagine and all these conspiracies are all so right. exciting. That was our interview and with Great Anya show, Bookstein. really. Nope. Oh. There we go. Oh, that was our interview with Anya Buchstein. Guys, I'm sure that will make it in Best of the Week. Perry, put it in the uh, time code there. Um, you guys can check the whole interview out on the Collider Video channel. She played Kinvara on Game of Thrones. I'm sure we'll see her again somewhere. They wouldn't just oh, yeah. tease a major character like that and not bring her back somewhere down the line. Maybe David knows somewhere about that because he brought. you can hold up your cool book there, David, yeah. for everybody to see. Can you lift yeah. that? That's a lot of, that's a, that's a lot lot of pages. pages. Yeah, it's a lot, lot of pages. Of book. Yeah, it's a beautiful you know, book. You know what that would be really good for? Uh, you can like put a lot of like glasses on it. Like it's a big coaster. I know, but they'll make marks everywhere. <laughs> Mess up. This I was is thinking it would be good if, like, you know, one of the sons of the harpy like busted into your house and you were like, what? "Mother, no!" <laughs> or the the dragon seal would. Uh, Have you yeah. read that cover to cover? It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So every time I watch an episode of Game of Thrones, I kind of go back. To, it's like a little encyclopedia, a visual encyclopedia, so you can get a little history lesson. It's not it's spoiler free, so you yeah. won't be spoiled by it oh, if you read great. it. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's the just the history, of, uh, never ending story. Like you, open it is like it. The, yeah, it even has the, the it's seal. like a Bible. Yeah, 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 it's like the Bible. It's a, it's, it's a George R R Martin Bible. <laughs> it sure and let us is. say. Amen. 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 <laughs> We're still waiting for that next gospel. Yes. Please. Uh, so you guys, last week we didn't get we didn't get a chance to really delve into some Game of Thrones, so we will talk about it today for a little bit. No spoilers to be said. Uh, I thought this was my least favorite episode of the season. So this far. last week. Yes. The one oh, we two no. days ago. Two two no. days ago on Sunday, we all watched Game of Thrones. I thought it was my least favorite of the season. Um, I did enjoy obviously the dragon part. Uh, I guess we could throw a spoiler alert out. Oh, did you want to throw a spoiler alert out there? Dragons. There were dragon. A dragon. I really want to see. Okay, so friggin. <laughs> there you go. Uh, ooh, there. Um, I really want to see the other two dragons. I know Tyrion went in there, but he, we never saw him close the tomb. Like, let those dragons out. I don't care if they're frying up people here. Who and there. let those dragons out? <laughs> who? 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 <laughs> I love you guys. For the show. <laughs> I got that one. That was fantastic. That was fantastic. Okay, here's my thing because you are not the only person who said this. I completely disagree with you. Okay. I think that what you saw this week was a setup episode. Yeah. And what we know very well, and the weeks before episode proved nobody pays off a setup better than Game of Thrones. Six seasons. Did we get a setup? And then did we get a payoff? Always. Holy F-bomb, we got a payoff. We got a payoff that I was crying about two days after the episode aired. So I understand that there was a little bit of frustration with this episode. It's not frustration. But I mean, I enjoyed the hell out of the episode. I just thought it was my least favorite of this, this, this season. This season also is a really hard one to gauge because it has been boffo episode. They're throwing after. a lot of information oh, every man. week. This is a... This is a a book reader's episode, I feel oh, like. Okay. You know, it, there was a lot of little things in there. Like, oh, there's was, a lot of goodies in there. A lot of goodies. So if I would have done the review, I would have been skewered. I would have been put on the spot. I don't even want to do would that review. Would you say flayed? Flayed. Would oh, you have been the flayed nice. man? Yeah, oh, thank you. Good. Well, one of the things that I think was very interesting, throw up a spoiler alert for me, Adam. 
Okay. Keeping Adam busy back okay. there today. Just the, leave it up for a little bit, Adam. We're gonna just, just let it float. The Bran <laughs> flashback montage, which I watched a couple of times. So we get to see the Mad King. We get to see. You him see, J- of, he, J- Jamie grabs the sword. We don't get to see him, you know, go. We but we kind of see him stab him in yeah, the back. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, we I get did to a see some stuff. Frame, frame of it. Oh yeah. yeah, no, I watched yeah. it like four or five times, mm-hmm. and there's yeah. some really interesting stuff that we can glean from that. Uh, they also go back to the Ned Stark moment where he's at the Tower of Joy, which mm-hmm. I want to get back to in the show. And we see a bloody hand, but we don't know whose hand is bloodied. Yeah. I just, I, I think that it was an episode where in a, like three more episodes, you're going to look back and be like, that episode was so bomb because it set up all the stuff that we now see. I was going to say real quick, I love what's happening to Arya. Because I know, because I know, I know, Finally, I know. We've I was been, just going to say my favorite part of the episode. Thank you, David. Because I think we all agree that we we know that she's she's not no one. She is yeah. someone. She yes. is Arya Stark. She's the daughter of Ned Stark. She can never be no one. She has a path. She has a choice. She got needle, and we got the fight. She got to fight that girl. And everybody wants to see that fight. Girl. Where everybody do you wants think to see that fight. She is right now. Well. Oh, like where's she? Oh, you where mean in that little area? Where is she hiding? Where oh, is know. that little hiding space? I don't know space. that little hiding space. She is. can fight blind. They taught her to fight I, blind. I don't think she she, she hasn't left the city yet. No, no, no. she's still in the city. So I mean, but it, it's, it's gonna be a fight. But I, think. I always wonder if she's because like because if hiding. I had to hear one more freaking episode where like a girl has no name. What is the girl's name? She has no. I don't. A care. girl's not have desires. The girl better freaking put a sword in somebody's eyeball soon because <laughs> I'm gonna freaking lose my no name mind. Speaking of a girl has no name and sticking a sword in the eye, we have to talk about Petty Dreadful a little bit later on because eh, my god. Before, oh my god! Uh, We're gonna get there I didn't even put in highs and lows because I tried to watch <gasps> the first five minutes. I'll never watch that show, guys. Oh, so, you're yeah. crazy! You're yeah. crazy! <laughs> you're depriving yourself. But just to get to the end of this episode, I have to say it again: Dario was better at his Ed's grind. At the very end, where I'm like, oh come on, no. Oh, and we three. also, you know, we finally got 100%. two. Not off topic, but we got a uh, 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 Bron uh, reference. Um, the um, Tyrion's uh, old uh, bodyguard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Remember, everybody, oh, yeah. Everybody's wondering where he is. So you heard Jamie when he's talking to Shirley, like we're gonna get Bron, we're gonna oh, go yeah. these boys, and we're gonna go do something. Yes. Like he talked about him, so he's hopefully coming back. Right? I is hope. he in Dorne? Where is he? Well, he got. Remember, he he uh, married somebody, got a house. I can't remember right, where, where he where is. Where are they? They're like uh, he left him on an island somewhere because he was yeah. my favorite character. Oh, for that's, a really right, long that's right. Time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot no, about that. No, I know, that's but right. that is that was that's the right. best. But it sounds like Jamie's gonna get him and get him some boys. And you okay, but there is one other thing. There is a moment where she there's that kind of hot but really upset scene between Jamie and Cersei Lannister yeah. where they like start you know being not brother and sister and mm-hmm. I was just like it's hot but it's gross but it's hot but it's gross uh, she says it's going to be a trial by combat and I have the mountain and all of a sudden I was like what if this is where the hound comes back and we get this, you, you think the sparrow would use he would get use this, the, this, the hound if, is, what if we get yeah. like zombie hound against zombie mountain maybe this is where we see the return of that character I don't know. TBD. All possible, but I will All say thank you, David, for, for concurring with my opinion that finally Arya Stark has a freaking name. She has a name. Gonna, she is someone. She's going back. She's someone. All right, her. that was our Game of Thrones talk, guys. Uh, a lot of fun. Obviously, Game of Thrones is the best. Uh, we're going to go into the superhero rundown, the part of the show where we talk about all the goings on in superhero television. Sinead, what is first? Noah Hawley, the mind behind the Fargo TV series, talked this week about his plans for his Legion series at FX and his plans to tie it into the X-Men cinematic universe. The show has a cast in line with the likes of Dan Stevens of Downtown Abbey in the lead role, Aubrey Ooh, Plaza, uh, Downton Girl, Downton, Downton Abbey, Downton. In, in, <laughs> Downton. No, that's my fault, yeah. <laughs> In the lead role, Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza and Gene Smart. And FX ordered the series today to air early in 2017. Holly wrote the pilot and is executive producing alongside Laura Schuler Donner, Simon Kinberg, and Brian Singer with Marvel's Jim Corey and Fargo EP John Cameron. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Holly said, There's, whatever, 9,000 superhero stories right now. <laughs> They've got all the running and kicking covered. I think my goal with this is to do something whimsical and imaginative and unexpected. Not just because I want to do something different, but because it feels like the right way to tell this story. David, is FX and the team behind Legion a new direction for the superhero genre? I hope so. And I trust Noah Hawley. That's why. Because I love Fargo so much. Fargo... Two, uh, season two was one of my top oh. three s- s- shows last year. So it's fantastic. Dan Stevens is blowing up. Left out Navi. 
did a great movie called The Guest. Now he's going to be the Beast and Beauty and the Beast is coming out in 2017. And now he's in this. I think he's on the right track. I think you need to watch out for Dan Stevens. Check him out. Go watch The Guest if you haven't seen it. Also, go back and watch Downton Abbey, of course. It's a TV talk. Of course. Um, or no, Downtown I'm, I'm, Abbey. Yeah, That's Down. Shady. No, no, that, that's my fault. I, I was saying we Downtown Abbey Sinead. back there yeah. uh, a bunch, so I think I got it in Sinead's head about Downtown I'm Abbey. I'm pretty sure I've always go called check it out, Downtown Abbey, actually. Go check out that, that Puff Daddy skit if you haven't seen it. Type in Puff Daddy down, Downtown Abbey. It's, it's so funny. It's so good. It's on Fun to Your Diet. It's really good. Um, but yeah, I, I'm thrilled for this. I hope it's good. It's got a great cast. It's got great people behind it, so I'm excited for it. It has a lot of potential, but of course... Will it pass our three episode tests? You yeah. know, will it succeed? We'll, we'll have to wait and see. There is a, a, this is a totally off subject thing, but there is a very, very famous bar in West Hollywood called The Abbey. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I went there one time, it's a gay bar, uh, and I went there one time with a bunch of girls that I used to work at a bar with and I dressed up in English attire. Mm -hmm. And I walked in and they were like, it's really hot out. What are you doing? I was like, it's Downton Abbey. And nobody got the joke. And I walked home. Wow. <laughs> so no one the, That's wow. awesome of you, though, that you did that. That makes me like you even more, Josh. <laughs> That's bit. awesome. Um, I'm, this, I, is this, this, I did all the, like, the little back reading on this. This has really no tie to that movie with Paul Bettany. No, right? no, Legion, no, 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 no. Uh, so this one that's going to tie into the X-Men universe, which I'm psyched about because FX hasn't really done a superhero show. Right. And they're... I mean, what, like one in 20 of their shows isn't good? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm even watching Tyrant. Do you watch Tyrant, don't you? Do you watch yeah, Tyrant? I, watch, I mean, yeah. the, their uh, president even said he wanted to be the HBO of basic cable. He's yes. come out and said that. So, I mean, he's got great aspirations. Like, even Tyrant has some awesome parts to it. it. So, the fact they're getting into this and they're going into the, the more heady space mm -hmm. of a superhero, the more like, uh, I almost, the way they describe it almost sounds like American Horror Story for superhero genre, which excites me, even though I don't watch American Horror Story because I'm scared of things. This, this could be like a real really cool psychological thriller inside the mind of a superhero. I dig it. I like the idea. I think it's going to be great and it makes perfect sense. Fox is the studio that has X-Men, now mm -hmm. FX. It just it's a perfect marriage. But like you guys are saying, I think what's interesting here is this doesn't have to this can Netflix itself. This yeah. doesn't have to adhere to any like prior rules. This can create its own world. And I think that Fargo, like you guys have said, was one of the it is one of the few times we were saying earlier should movies be made into TV shows. That's Rare. a perfect example of doing it so right because not only do you get the tone but you do it in an original way that pays homage but is totally its own thing mm -hmm. and can stand on its own two feet and that's because what I think we'll have here. they're not the story. Right. They're not rebooting. They're not remaking. They are simply naming it for namesake's purposes because they know it's a weird crime drama and they're doing standalone pieces for it. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. that's a With the tip thing. of the hat. There's a tip yeah. of the hat tip and I think hat. that this will be the same thing and I'm really happy to see that Aubrey Plaza is going to be in this because Aubrey Plaza I loved and her movies have been garbage. Yeah, Dirty good. Grandpa, probably the worst movie that will come out this year. <laughs> she, I, I love her on TV. I think she's a great character actress, but she's I, not a lead actress. I, I want to see her like go yeah. back to do, go back to TV, honey. Go back Agreed. to TV. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, all right, next we're going to talk a uh, couple of the finales that happened this past week in superhero TV. Uh, we'll start with The Flash. Spoiler alert, throw it up there. A money, there you go. Uh, David, what do you think the finale here, let's just, we'll run through these kind of quickly. What do you think the finale means here in Flash? What's gonna happen in season three? Uh, I'm, I'm excited because I think, well now we have an Earth three yeah. that's out there now. We have Jay Garrick is back. Uh, well, I guess he's not back, but we finally out who the guy was in the Iron Mask yeah. is revealed, which is fantastic. Also, it plays off with Legends. The Legends Earth three actually takes place in 1990s television. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> right. And um, I, I loved his suit. I mean, that moment we were uh, before we were reviewed it. John Rocco was sitting next to me, and he jumped up and like freaked out when Jay Garrick was revealed. Uh, we also had Legends of Tomorrow. We know that uh, we have the JSA exists, so Justice yeah. Society of America exists. So I mean, there's this whole world they can go into. We have the DC Rebirth comic books out right now, which I'm mm -hmm. sure they talked about uh, on Heroes. I would assume. And, and that kind of uh, is a flash story in of itself with uh, characters that are from the, the the television series as well as characters that we haven't seen yet. So there's so much they can do next season. So what does the him going back to stop the murder of his mother? It's going to screw he, things up. We're going in the Flashpoint paradox now, yeah, okay. which uh, is, uh, was an animated movie. It was also when they did the New 52 in DC Comics about four or five years ago now. Okay. did a whole series called The Flashpoint Paradox, and he saved his mom, and everything went to crap. 
Interesting. Thomas Wayne is Batman in yeah. that world. We're not going to get Thomas Wayne in this, but I mean, there's a lot of cool stories they can pull from in that universe. It's going to be a fun season. They can like, they can basically just change the table. They can yeah. change things around. It's not going to be the same show. I dug that, and I will say, <clears throat> going into the next point here in Superhero mm-hmm. Rundown, how disappointed I was in the Flash, uh, in the in the Arrow season finale, because yes. I thought the Flash season finale, like Flash has done since this has come on the air, is really kind of kick butt as mm-hmm. compared to the Arrow, which is really kind of just fallen off. And and I know I did the recap show, and I know that I talk positively about it every week, and we had Echo Callum on the show, so we couldn't really give our god honest opinions about the Flash about the Arrow season and season finale. I thought it was extremely disappointing. I thought season four was it was not as bad as season three, but it was it was very disappointing. I Again, the, what it goes back to is we don't need 23 episode seasons of a television show, especially one like Arrow, and especially even Flash had its moments of weakness this season. Sure. If you even cut it down to 16, we could really streamline and have one big, big bad instead of having a big bad appear every three episodes. I thought that the, the Arrow season finale, you got back down and pared it down back to Oliver and, and Felicity, but nobody gives a crap. Like everybody's losing faith, everybody's losing caring for these characters that they fell in love with two seasons ago because we've just beaten down the soap opera aspect of the show and not what the show is about, which is a dark, gritty action show. Mm-hmm. And I thought, and I thought Arrow has really kind of fallen off the map. Do I care about what happens in season five? Not particularly, because this this it, this, this season finale just was there. Yeah, it was just another episode. Uh, let's go into the fourth point here in superhero rundown, Sinead. We were treated last week to set photos from Marvel's upcoming Netflix series, Luke Cage and His Foil, a Diamondback played by Eric Luray Harvey of Boardwalk Empire fame. <clears throat> Diamondback, a.k.a. Willis Stryker, was Cage's childhood friend who re-enters the hero for hire's life to ruin his valiant efforts to clean up Harlem. Sasha, what do you think of the look of Diamondback? I mean, I'm looking at Boardwalk Empire and I'm like, Sty, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. I, I just love that that actor. I have yeah. no idea what his name is. I never Eric Leray Harvey. Eric Leray Harvey was if you fantastic. Were listening to I wasn't because I was talking to Adam. We were making kissy faces from across the room. Uh, I mm. loved him so much on that show. He was done. He was great. Mm-hmm. And I think that this looks very cool. I like the idea. You have to tell me more because I don't know that much about Daredevil. So Diamondback, like all of them, kind of have snaky names. Like there's like a there's like a Mamba. There's like a like a Hammerhead or something. What yeah. are the names? Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with. I mean, Daredevil's not my strength in comic oh. books, honest. I mean, I've seen all the I'm series. Shocked. I, I know. We found a weak point had, in your armor. This is crazy. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna try to spout off some names. I don't know. And I'm gonna get called out for oh. it because I, I'm a little. My knowledge in Daredevil was strong. Uh, I was reading a cool thing, uh, the Hero for Hire. Um, Diamondback is the big bad in a lot of these, but because he was like his childhood best friend. But mm-hmm. there's also they, you know, they there. We didn't see a lot of the photos yet, but we know a lot of the cast, like Theo Rossi from Sons of Anarchy, who I love. Uh, yeah, who's gonna be incredible, but. Uh, I personally, if we're just judging on the photos alone, it looks goofy. He kind of looks like why? Look I thought it was like a, mag- it's like a Magneto thing. Could you, bring, could you bring up that? Yeah, but but so did John Diggle try to pull this off in in Arrow? It's Robocop. It's like Robocop. Robocop. It's, yeah. Robocop. It's, yeah. it's Robocop by way of Magneto. <laughs> Dread, it looks like Dread. It looks like Magneto. It looks like all those. Wait, but you're naming awesome people. Hold you're on, but, <laughs> now, but it also with the thing, it kind of looks like Devo. It looks like Whippet. Whip it good. No, it doesn't. Da-na-na-na. It has to be red and it has to be it. like, no way. It. it does not look like Devo. I see Dread. I see I see Magneto. I see Robocop. I, and I see an actor who I've loved previously on HBO. And I think it, I think it looks fun. It's and I like that they're like beating on K- each yeah, other's yeah. ass on the street. Yeah. I like that. That's and why I feel like Luke Cage, Daredevil. I mean, that's why we know we were picking on Arrow earlier. I feel like if Arrow was on a different network, it could be Daredevil. It could be yeah. hopefully what Luke Cage were hoping it's going to be. It's just that it's limited. It has to do that whole soap opera thing that CW does sometimes. And if it was off that network and on maybe one of the premium networks or Netflix, I think it could be better. Whatever. This is what and I want to yeah. see Rosario Dawson. I think this. I think this is going to be she great. I hope greatest. she plays a bigger role in Luke Cage. They've said that she's going to have a significant. Which arc. is good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. She yeah. is the best tie in a universe i love her in all like in jessica jones in Mm -hmm. daredevil she is so great uh i I just have like a crush on rosario it's a beautiful one it's great it's a good it's a good crush to have Mm -hmm. okay uh let's go into some highs and lows highs and lows of the week guys uh sinead has a very passionate high that ended up in the low section we'll get to that in a second uh let's start with the highs we got the roadies trailer for showtime the cameron crow show we got the night manager finale i begrudgingly put that in high because i know sasha and david love it yep uh we got (laughs) chef's table season two we got the roots reboot we got silicon valley and we got the path finale that david sinead and i were very high on uh what do you want to start with sinead 
or Sa- Sasha. <laughs> uh, I'm going to totally nerd out. We're going to start with Chef's Table because, oh my God, the food gasms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this show, so I was a chef for 11 years. So oh, food for that. me is like the ultimate and the cinematography of this show, it is so gorgeous. The first episode introduces us to uh, a chef who is one of the premier chefs in America. He also was in a great documentary called Spinning Plates, Grant Osh- uh, uh, Ockhats, Ockhats, mm-hmm. Ockhats. Yeah, and he's also been on like Top Chef and yeah. you see him everywhere, yeah. Dude is so talented and the food he makes is crazy. And it is food that is made for cinematography. It is made for like, I want him and Nicholas winning Refn to make a movie together because I'm just like, this is, ah, it is so beautiful. And the whole time, this whole show is skeet, 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 <laughs> foodgasms all day long. It is of the best and none of that boring <laughs> top chef we have to compete is it just him no, no. it's a they for each episode they go to like another premiere chef Ooh. and you just like follow their really? journey they go all over you the watch world too, not just food. americans oh, very yeah, cool just like there was a great episode last season from japan and like they go to italy and episode two is a guy uh, from uh, uh sao paulo uh brazil which I, is it's a really good episode yeah. so i, I, I didn't know about cool. chef's table mm-hmm. and you guys talked about it in an email chain and so i went and watched it and immediately like binged the first three like that and that's three hours of tv and i'm i love food and i've I lived in Modena for like oh a very God. brief two week period when I fell in love with the girl. Uh, it's, oh. uh, it's a story for another time. Uh, and, I can't wait for uh, that other time. Story, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Modena is an unbelievable small Italian town and the fact that a three Michelin star restaurant is tucked into a back alley. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and if you guys know anything about cars, that's where Ferrari's from. Uh, and uh, you know Maserati and so, loves of your life and the loves of my <laughs> life and a little Motorino that I used to own. Anyway, uh, I love Chef's Table. I cannot wait to get to season two. If this there is something beautiful about chefs and cooking and talking about cooking and seeing what they do and how they create food because I've worked in five restaurants, six restaurants, you know, from a waiter to a busboy to a bartender, and like I think mixology in the bartender world is is a crock of shit because it ruins bars. Uh, you can't get drinks. It's too. You can't get drinks fast enough and all the drinks end up tasting the same way after you like get one sweet drink you're like well, well this is okay and then <laughs> it's over chefs on the other hand take like a billion ingredients and like it's an egg and you're like this is the greatest egg i've ever had in my life oh my god he talks about this thing called a black truffle explosion and you see him making it and i i had a black truffle explosion <laughs> in my pants <laughs> full on what about that pillow <gasps> oh that my pillow god though. Pillow that, like, that pillow that like makes sense yeah. i was dying if you have 500 dollars to drop on a tasting menu you're in chicago Definitely check that place out. I straight out. up want to fly yeah, there. Wait, what did you guys think, Rob? And also, Rody, speaking of like gasms, mm. Carla Gugino, no. Gugino, whatever. Cugino. Well, I don't care. Well, how can you not say that name? Listen, Carla Cugino. Carla Troop Beverly Hills. How could you not say Imogen? <laughs> Her name's Imogen. This is what I think is fascinating. So we've got vinyl, we've got Rody's, which are very similar, but I feel like Rody's, the Cameron Crowe version, is doing what Martin Scorsese says he got wrong. Oh, and you've got Imogen. Not just compare oh, Cameron Crowe to Martin Scorsese. Oh, oh, no. Martin Scorsese, first oh, of all, no. didn't do vinyl. His name is on. Well, he, it. he directed the. I mean, he the did the pilot. pilot. He the pilot. But I see you've got Imogen Poots and um, <laughs> Imogen. <laughs> It's not emoji. Her name it's is Imogen. Her name is Imogen. You guys. Okay. It's Imogen. Sorry, guys. So you got Imogen Poots and then curly hair girl that you're in love with. Help me name. I'm blanking. But from vinyl, the girl who always showed her boobies. Juno oh Temple. yeah, Juno Temple. Juno Temple. Yeah. Oh, I so love I feel like her. they're playing very yeah. similar parts. And now you got Bobby Cannavale playing the Carla Cugino Cugino part. I want to watch Rody so bad. I and think then it's Luke be great. Wilson just plays the who part. Mm-hmm. What, he's what just, part is he? He's just Luke Wilson. And let me say, this is, it looks so much like Almost Famous because they shot at the let same me, auditorium in San Diego where that movie starts. I think it's going to be great. I will say this. Cameron Crowe in all of his movies and such, besides a select two. Aloha. Maybe three. Aloha. He is the king of trailers. Like if you, the first time you saw the Aloha trailer, you're like, this movie looks good. Then you watched Aloha and that movie was a crock of crap. Okay, this mo- this show has an amazing trailer. I'm not sold on what the show is about. It's just like mm-hmm. cool skateboard through the thing. <laughs> we well, that's what music. I was gonna say. This uh, the trailer's super fun, but I still don't know what the plot is. Yes. Thank you. Shane. Like, what do you know? What the show is about? It's about the behind the scenes working of a band and roadies, and but that you that you can get from the title. You know what I'm saying? Well, but I also got it from the trailer. <laughs> spit wow. your water somewhere safe. <laughs> and, Makuga, spit I'm, your water I'm just somewhere being safe. real. Like, I love the trailer. <laughs> it got me in a really good mood, and the music was great. But then afterwards, I was like, but I still don't know what it's about. I think it's almost famous. Thirty years later, but now we're focusing just behind the scenes, not on the groupies or on like a journalist, but on the woman who's running the show. And I think that's a show I want to watch. All right, let's go to the night manager finale. Uh, 
Uh, I begrudgingly put it on the high for you guys. Again, Night Manager, six episodes, could have been done in an hour and 45 minutes. They, they get them. It's a CSI. They've solved it. I actually thought that the worst part of the show was the last five minutes because I felt like there needed to be about 30 minutes before the ending. I turned to my husband and I was like, the show's going to be done they're not giving me enough lead up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like it was just a little too truncated, but I still loved it. I think Elizabeth it's Debacki was unreal. I The cinematography and those shots on the eye. Get away from my eyeball. <laughs> I don't want any more eyeball shots. This I call shot. it the Makuga. Yeah. I must have been watching a different show. I, I, no. I loved everything about it. Man. I thought the ending, the ending's different from the book. The book's ending is different. Um, it's a nice, nice, tidy, tidy little neat package tidy there. Tidy of a show? Yeah. No, not okay. tidy white. It those get dirty. No, this is clean. This is good. This is good I stuff. loved it. I, but I still will say Hiddleston, hashtag not my bond. But He's now coming. they're saying He's that bond. the woman who directed The Night Manager is going to be directing the Bond movies, which might be why Hiddleston mm -hmm. is in the conversation there, is, instead of Idris Elba. More than 10 be. eye close-ups. I'm out of James Bond. Uh, let's talk the, re the Roots reboots. You guys saw it. I didn't get a oh chance my to see God. it yet. Tell cool. me about it. So Roots, I mean, for those of you maybe who don't even have ever heard of Roots, Roots was uh, almost what, 40 years old now, uh, based off a book by Alex Haley, written about Kunta Kente, uh, someone from the Gambia. I've actually been to uh, Kunta Kente's village in the Gambia with my, with my family. That's awesome. you know, took a trip to Africa. We wanted to see where the slave trade took place because on my family, on my mom's side, we can trace back all the way to slavery. Holy cow. Um, which is Ancestry.com and all that stuff. Way we have some photos. My and anyway, so this, this just tackles so many issues that I think are still relevant today, even though, of course, we're not living in antebellum slavery period. But it was such a beautiful story about family, survival, uh, what it means to, to, to be a man or a woman growing up in this society, what it means to keep your sanity and your faith intact amongst all the, amidst all this, this horror going on. And I think they capture in such a beautiful way. It's two hours, going to be four, be only four nights, mm -hmm. uh, two hours every night on History Channel, A&E. I think they're uh, airing on all those channels. And it, I thought it was so well done, so well acted. This young the man. The original was really well done. It was really well done. And LeVar and Burton. LeVar played. Burton. There's a cameo. You got to look for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's also he's an executive there. producer. And yeah, sure, yeah. The, the creepy part, I think, for a lot of people that saw the first Roots when it first came out was was the evil slave owner is the Brady, the father in the Brady Bunch. <laughs> so you're like, this guy's like, right. oh, he's like Bob Saget going about to, that. to beat slaves in his next role. Oh, and it's it was a really tough thing for America to get on board with, was, uh, with it, it, Pete, what's the father's name in the Brady Bunch? I don't Tom remember. Brady? <laughs> it was not Tom Brady. That was not his name. No, never mind. Right. No. But I can't wait to see it. It looks fantastic. And now well, we're, we're great cast. Forrest Whitaker, oh, Lawrence yeah. Fishburne, Jonathan Reese, uh, Myers is going to be on it uh, later. So Matthew I mean, Good is Matthew Good. really great. The thing is, is I, I mean, I, I cannot say that you're going to go in and it's like, it's a great show to watch because it is so, so difficult to actually sit through. Um, I would be very interested to see both of your experiences. Like, I would love to watch it with both you and Sinead because I think that you probably have a different experience watching it than I do. But like, as a responsible American, I feel like you have to watch this show. Like, the this is a completely unvarnished version of what our nation was founded on. Mm -hmm. And to see it I, I mean, talking about it, I'm getting the chills. Like, it's brutal and it is heartbreaking. And I think that it will bring up some really interesting conversations. And uh, I just, it is one of the most horrific two hours I've watched in a while, but really necessary and really, really well done. And I think that, like, it should be shown in every American school. Yeah, and it's too mm -hmm. bad. I, uh, go, I'll go try to be brief on this, but I think Snoop Dogg had a tweet that came out talking yeah. about protesting the show, and not because it's a poorly made show, but because he's tired. I think he's he's frustrated. He's tired of seeing black people only getting roles, being slaves, or subservient to white people, which I understand that argument, but at the same time, it's so great to see this cast, which is so diverse and so talented, getting work in Hollywood, and I realize, you know, if you have an Asian cast and they're doing martial arts, I, I realize that that's, it's too bad. It shouldn't be like that. We should be in a world where the rep and it can be anybody can be in that role you know we shouldn't have to divide people up into different races but the fact that people are getting work is a good thing and that this is so well made is a good thing and it's an important and relevant story even today is an important thing so please if you saw that tweet don't boycott the show yeah. uh, please watch it it's, it's very good and some great acting performances from people outside of Lawrence Fishburne and Forrest Whitaker that you might never see again or totally. hopefully you'll see them again and don't it, like you might be tempted to turn it off I will yeah. say because there were moments where I was like man this is rough and I, I am not a cringy person mm -hmm. but that's one of the reasons you have to watch it yeah. and probably not take civil rights advice from Snoop Dogg. No, no, uh, true. Yeah, I There's would like that. to end He's on a voice, this though, yeah. real quick. Uh, Sinead, David, and I from from we did the pilot review on this show. I loved the path on Hulu. I know it didn't mm -hmm. get a ton of press. I thought it ended the the season finale was great. Mm -hmm. I loved how this show dealt with religion and cultish behavior and people with uh, you know 
sociopathic tendencies that are brought into cults and places like that and they're taught this with light or they're they're so fixated on this religion and on following this light that may or may not be real but they need something to grasp onto which is a lot of religions if you if you look at it i thought it was so well done uh were there parts with a little hokey absolutely but i thought each episode had a really defining moment that kept me wanting to come back Sinead, i know you're a fan yeah absolutely i loved this show i think that it wasn't always in your face and in the beginning when i started watching it, i thought that's what it was missing at times. I was like, where's the intensity? But I actually really liked it looking back on the whole season. It was just enough of those raw moments, just enough of those intense moments, just enough of those hokey moments, the drama. Everything was very well done. It's very, it has a, such a great art. And I also just love this cast. They are incredible. Michelle Monaghan's character, like I wanted to rip her freaking off. head off. She <laughs> drove her. me up the wall every single time. I'm like, oh, you bitch. Every yeah. single time. And I'm like, oh, God, I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's literally how she made me feel because she's the lead of this show and she's got such a tender heart and she's so sweet, but she's absolutely batshit crazy. Yep. And it's just so crazy to see, like you said, these people with sociopathic tendencies and all these people who are so broken. This is something that happens. Like, yeah. this really happens where they, they, prey on people that need anything they're so desperate for a little yeah. bit of love and they are so brainwashed yeah. it's mm -hmm. unbelievable Absolutely. but i loved it loved yeah. it uh okay let's go into some lows um the get shorty 10 episode mini miniseries again i don't think we need it uh sasha kept watching containment which was because i thought we were supposed to do it if you would so listen mad. to your cohorts here on the uh. clatter tv talk you would know we stopped watching that uh. after the pilot uh, Showtime botching this NHL series, which is, it hurts my feelings. Uh, we're, I'm not going to talk Bloodline Season 2 because uh, next week, uh, Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, myself, and Sasha Poreva are going to do a full series review of Bloodline, which will air uh, on uh, Monday or Tuesday of next week. And then another low light is here because uh, we're going to talk a little Bachelorette. Oh, uh, yeah, because girl. Because Sasha hates it and Sinead wants to talk about it. We don't rarely, we rarely talk about reality TV. So, girls, here's your 22 seconds and go. <laughs> okay, so I love The Bachelorette and I've watched it forever. And I love Bachelor in Paradise and I love The Bachelor. But Joho is the worst and she's so obviously a fame whore. And I already know that Aaron Rodgers' brother is going to win because they're both nasty fame whores. And I tried and I love it. And I feel like this time when I turned it on, I got 20 minutes in and I was watching it the way probably Makuga and David would. I was like, every single person on the show was an idiot. Everyone's an ass. Asshole. I hate it and the manipulation was real. However, I will be watching the poop out of Unreal. Why should I give it another chance? Sinead. Well, first of all, you only watch the pilot, which I will say in all of the Bachelor history and Bachelorette is always a bunch of crap. So you have to give it past the pilot. It does get a lot better. And last night's episode is absolute absurdity. It's nuts and it's super cheesy, but that's what the Bachelorette is. It's supposed to be lame and you're supposed to be like, what the hell are you saying? And not not Aaron Rodgers, sure, he seems like he's going to win for sure, but not Aaron Rodgers is also absolutely freaking gorgeous and you have to give it to him and he's really sweet. And there's this guy, Chad, the demon of the house His or whatever. His name is Chad. Yeah. The, of course he's the demon. The demon of the house. He is so entertaining. It's totally like guilty pleasure. Sure, it's The Bachelorette, but watch it. You'll get a laugh, if anything. I always loved it, and I always used to watch it. I just find JoJo so obviously, like, you know her brother was on Ready for Love? Yes. Like, they are a whole family who has wanted to get celebrity was stardom, JoJo's and now- Was JoJo's one the champagne out yes. the bottle? Yes. So you like her. Zing. No, I I'm telling you, See, I, I, I usually love it, but man, I, Here, I don't think I can do it. a little update. If you guys get a significant <sighs> other, you'll have to watch these shows. Yeah. Um, sure. I'm going to say real quick, uh, Showtime- Is it the girl from Italy? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, I will say I love 24 7 on HBO whether it's boxing or whether it's Road to the Winter Classic or Hard Knocks which is incredible television HBO does the sports documentary well Showtime has continually botched it and I don't know why it's basically the same producers it's the same way just watch the HBO one and duplicated. So HBO, finally, we're getting this, in this NHL series following the last four teams in the playoffs. And if you guys are sports fans, you know that the NHL playoffs is the most intense, intense sporting event in all of sports. There is no other sporting event like it. It's two and a half months of getting the shit kicked um, out of you. I don't know about that. I watched game six and game seven. Uh, I mean, and David seems to be thinking, that's not true. Like, of hockey? Do they get the shit kicked out of themselves for day in, day out. 
Yeah, it's well said in sports, sports that there is no drug testing during the postseason of, of NHL because these guys are getting the shit kicked out of them day in and day out. Right, it's, there's three games in the NFL. It's, baseball's just for dudes that hang out in a, in a field. And and <laughs> the basketball, they run up and down. They don't get hit. Hockey is the hardest. And this is so, something that Showtime isn't showing. It's showing it's just like the teams they play, they did the goal, it's over. It's 30 minutes. It should be an hour. So they should invest more in the people, like their personal lives, make it so that you care about these people instead of just showing high Highlights. Showtime botch. Okay, streaming spotlight. Guys, today in the United States, Peaky Blinders it came out. Sorry, I'm for yelling. Uh, Peaky Blinders came out today. We're going to binge it, David and I. And we're going to give you a series I'm not invited. Review. Do you want to binge it? Have I you watched wanna... the first two seasons? Yeah, oh, I you can. Have? Why can't I watch two? Oh, you can. Sexism. I didn't know. Okay, Jeez. Sasha's in. Have you watched any of Peaky Blinders, Sinead? No. Okay, you're out. Uh, <laughs> TFDI. Yeah. Um, what's, wait, what's that mean? Thanks for the invite. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> um, we're going to do a full series review of Peaky Blinders next week. So we're going to release a Bloodline and a Peaky Blinders. So this is your warning. If you haven't watched Peaky Blinders, it is only 18 total episodes. It's three seasons, six episodes of Pete's. Get your head out your butts. Watch it. <laughs> it's Ooh. perfect. You watch it. You watch wait, it. Wait, question. Murphy. So we had this over email. Yeah. I started watching it. It was in my low lights, Bloodline season two. Do I have to go past the three episodes that I did already? Yes. I, I don't know uh, what you're thinking. I love the first three episodes you I've seen. Guys. It's great TV. David? Uh, I, He's yeah. feeling it. He's feeling I'm Peaky, feeling Peaky Blinders. Blinders. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Bloodline, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll wear, I'm going to wear my Peaky Blinders hat. <laughs> I might put razor blades in it. We Sweet. might get it. Yeah. You're, you guys just be ready for it. I'll have the Birmingham crew will be here. Birmingham, Birmingham crew will be here. Afterwards, yeah. we'll be at the garrison getting in fights and breaking glasses <laughs> off each other's faces. All right. <laughs> Twitter questions, guys. Hashtag at Collider TV talk every week. We love your questions. Make them creative. Make them awesome. You guys have been doing a lot of repeat questions, so think outside the box. If your question's not getting answered, that means either already been answered or it's just well, We not, don't like them. Or it's just no, not I'm, good I'm, enough. I'm joking, though. <laughs> Who leads us in Twitter questions? That's right, the beautiful Sinead DeFries. What is first? At Zach Duh 59 says, which two actors would you want to see headline True Detective Season 3? Now, we talked earlier that there may, there probably won't be a True Detective Season 3, but... If there if is. there were, and they had a redeem, like a total redeem season, uh -huh. I think you go female cast. I think so too. And you go both female cops. Oh my like God. Hardcore, they're having some really rough times, right? I wonder if we thought of the same thing, go. Who, who, who no, you go. you go. No, you go. No, you were in the middle. Okay, uh, my two picks. Obviously, I would go Carla Cugino because I think she's incredible. <laughs> she get, How do you say her name again? And exactly. Carla no. Cugino <laughs> and Debbie <laughs> Mazur from, uh, from Entourage. I don't think that no. that woman has not had enough gritty roles. She's hardcore bitch. She's incredible in Entourage, incredible in Goodfellas. And she hasn't. She just hasn't had that much. She's a HBO favorite. I think she would absolutely murder it. And she's so wow. on the verge of either being really straight and hot or could be a lesbian. And that's what you need in True Detective. See, because I was thinking... Gina Gershon oh. because I went to like a bound place and then but I wasn't thinking two female cops I was thinking we got to do a female and a male so it would be like a Gina Gershon with like somebody sort of grizzled like like a like in the Dennis Franz vein oh. but like but I like that I like two female cops big time what do you think Dave? Dave I like the male and female I like to see I'm gonna go I like Idris Elba yes. and Kate Blanchett Ooh. Whoa. Yeah. two Brits two Brits wow. yeah. so it's like Love Thor it. but and put it in put it in the UK don't bring it over here and give them American accents Put him, put him in the UK. Take it put him in London. The, no, I think what you do, you take it out of the South and you put it somewhere like either London or you put it in like Northern Europe or you put it in Southeast Asia or you put it in Canada. When do we see anything about well, Canada? I, 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 I don't crimes think happen in Canada. I don't they think can't they're allowed to have nice. guns. They can't have guns, right? So what? So it's, I think, you've got to solve it with the wits. With the hockey sticks. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it would be Idris Elba. Okay, what if it's Idris Elba and Tom Hiddleston solving mm -hmm. crimes together? Well, Silence. <laughs> yeah. The night manager meets Luther. Well, you, you, the you, night Luther. Well, also, you also have the, you also have the, the Thor cast, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah All right. I love that. Sinead, what's next? Michael Buggy tweets, if you had to be adopted by a TV family, which one would fit you best? Um... <laughs> The people in seventh heaven? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I don't know. What? Um, Just say the, it. Shameless. You would shameless, be on Shameless. Yeah, I was going to say Shameless the Gallaghers. I yeah. would love to be a Gallagher clan. That totally makes sense for you. But, I would want to be one of the pickles from Rugrats. Aw, uh -huh. that's a great I one. I feel like that makes sense, right? Well, I'd, I'd probably fit well with the, the Winslow family. Ah. 
Family matters. Family matters. Oh, they yeah. wouldn't treat you like the middle daughter where they just send her upstairs and she never returned. <laughs> oh, I know, yeah. I'll get locked in my room. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do when Urkel showed up? What would you do? I feel like Urkel and I could be friends. He's a little bit much for me, though. I probably, I, I don't feel know. Like I you, would be, you and Eddie would be like best buds. Yeah, you I like Eddie. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good best one. Eddie. Yeah. Best Eddie. Wait, best Eddie. Who, what about you, Sinead? Um, I don't think I'm I'm classy enough, but I would love to be a part of the Waldorfs from uh, Gossip Girl. Ooh. Ooh. Um, that I could totally, totally see that. See that. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. Totally. What's next, Sinead? Brian, <laughs> Brian tweets, what is your favorite miniseries of all time? I have a tie, Band of Brothers and Lonesome Dove. 100% uh, Band of Brothers. I'm with you, yeah. Brian, on that one. Uh, there isn't anything better. You're talking about Memorial Day. It, they always play it on HBO, the full thing. Uh, I got it from my dad as a Christmas or as a Father's Day present a couple years back, the full Band of Brothers on DVD. We sat down and watched it. Uh, I cried at the end, just pouring tears. If there's anything that, like, truly hits what war is like band of brothers it's unbelievable television it's funny you share that same memory i have that same memory too with my dad watching with my dad when yeah. it was on hbo and i so for me not only is it great but it also has that special memory of being with my dad and watching so for me it's definitely band of brothers yeah. uh i would say i'm gonna call true detective season one a miniseries okay. and that would be number one and with the tie Flesh and bone, man. I, I love that show yeah. so damn much. I would like to see another flesh and bone with with uh, with some sort of other fringe artistic thing. Because the Ooh, ballet, you yeah. wouldn't exactly call it fringe because it's sort of mainstream, but who goes to the ballet? Maybe the symphony? Like Mozart uh, in the Jungle is, is a joke. That show stinks. But it, it follows <laughs> symphony. And yeah. it could be something like that or like uh, mimes. I don't know. What do mimes do? Like street performers. A street performer? Because yeah. in New York, there's a street performing union. Oh, you know, no. out here yeah. in the Santa Clauses that do malls, there's a union for Santa Clauses. Like the cutthroat world of Santa Clauses and malls, those dudes make tons of money over Christmas. You're talking like 30, 40 grand in a Christmas. What? I gotta Santa get me a new job. Damn. Yeah, absolutely. All Good right, Sinead, what's next? Guy Ramsey tweets, someone should do a sharp layered VP TV comedy about campus politics. Discuss. So we're talking college campus politics? Was that not what Vice so. Principals is? But Vice Principals is a little I can't high wait school. For that show. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, that's going to be so fun. There's been so much, uh, there's always so much controversy around college sports, college chancellors, like this, this thing this week with Baylor and the, the sexual uh, assault and rape mm -hmm. things being covered up. I think that there is, it's, we're prime ready for a campus thing. I don't know if it's like a layered Veep type TV comedy because Veep is just incredible, yeah. like slapstick, not slapstick, but like, you know, one liner kind of comedy. I think a, a dramatic series based around campus politics could be a real, real awesome series. I'd I, watch that. Yeah, I mean, it'd, it'd have to be, it'd have to be clever. That's a tough subject to uh, uh, to approach there. But if they did it right and they had the right cast, I mean, Dreyfus, she's 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 killing it. I mean, she's so perfect for that role. Oh That's why God. she's nominated yeah. for Emmys and Golden Globes every single year. So, yeah. I think they'd have to have the right cast and, of course, the the right people behind it. Sure. JLD yeah. MVP. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, but did, you, did either of you guys watch Undeclared or did anybody? Oh, I love no. Undeclared. Undeclared. Yeah, yeah, I feel like Jay that. Tell second show. Yeah, yeah. I, but I don't know. I mean, between Community. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I like your You're version like of it. You're maniacs. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I want to love you and hug you and squeeze you. Forever and ever and ever. I just completely lost my train of thought. Campus politics. You said campus politics. Right, and then you said Charlie Hunnam, and now I'm just like balls. That's like that's it. Next, naked back humping. If you guys ever want to see a beautiful montage, just YouTube back humping montage from Sons of Anarchy. I still have the GIF saved on my phone. Oh, it's the best. Okay, I've completely lost it. All right, that is this week's TV talk, guys. In lieu of doing a pick, I would like to personally apologize to the entire country of England. The U. UK in general, uh, most of Europe, I guess. I guess I could just in, in, apologize to anybody outside of America. Last week I said I didn't want non-American people playing American roles. Uh, that's not really what I meant, but apparently that's what happened. And the guy uh, started a change.org to get me fired on TV talk. He currently has 11 supporters <laughs> and the and the, uh, and the eye of President Barack Obama. Uh, I will say this, I love British actors. I love British TV. I love British movies. Hell, if it wasn't for Tom Hardy, we wouldn't have some of the greatest movies of the last <laughs> two years. If I could be any gangster, I'd want to be a Peaky Blinder. Where are they from? Birmingham. That's right, in England. I don't dislike the UK. I don't like anything. I'm not xenophobic. I'm definitely not racist. There's nothing about that. I like television and movies, and sometimes I just say stupid shit. If I could have anything, I would like to come over to England and have a pint with all you guys and get into a fight outside a soccer stadium, okay? I love England. I love Europe. You guys can do whatever the hell you want. 
apparently British actors are heavily trained, they are professionally trained, and they are better <laughs> actors, and they can do a better job in roles. American actors are just models that talk on MTV and are wolves. That's the problem we've got right now, and apparently I made a stupid comment, and now change.org is getting me fired from TV talk, guys. So thanks for that. I appreciate that. I believe your name is something gold. Anyway, I love England. TV talk this week. Where can everybody find you? <laughs> Sinead DeVries. Oh, that's good. Um, you can find me signing the petition. Just kidding. <laughs> just Poor joking. Josh. Just joking, Josh. I'm totally kidding. Um, <laughs> that's so good, though. I heard about that through the grapevine of the halls of the Collider Video Studios, and I got a good laugh out of it then, and I'm getting a good laugh out of it now. Um, I'm online at Shane DeFreeze on all social media. You guys can find me usually here on Mondays for TV Talk and on Fridays for Movie Talk over the weekend for Mailbag. Um, yeah, and at that's Sinead.com. David Griffin. You can find me on Twitter at Griffin DE. And yeah, this man, I can vouch for this man. This man is a very kind man. He's a very caring man. He's a very non racist man. I would know people. So um, love Josh McCuga. I'm going to go ahead and get that petition taken down. I'm going to talk to Obama. He's my friend. So um, you can find me at Griffin DE. Like That's Josh good. said, we're doing some reviews next week. Uh, I won't be on Bloodline, but uh, look for a Peaky Blinders review next week for season three. So I can't wait to talk about that. Oh, God. <laughs> it's such a pro raver. I am sweating behind my kneecaps because I was laughing so hard because you did not tell me you were going to do that. <laughs> I just lost it. Uh, I'm on I'm on Pearl Raver. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sasha Pearl Raver, and you can see me on Fridays hosting FX Movie Download. And oh my God, that was the best. And Thursdays on Schmoes. Oh wow, I think I just ripped my spanks. <laughs> 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 Guys, you can find me crossing the pond at Josh Makuga on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you guys can see me here every Monday on Cl Collider TV Talk with these amazing, amazing people, guys. Hashtag at Collider TV Talk. Send us questions. Make fun of me for doing whatever it is that I do. And every Monday on my YouTube channel, I release an episode of The Josh Makuga Show. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back next week, as always. Put down the book. Give me that book. Give me that book. Give me the book. <laughs> we brought a book. Put down the book. Oh, no, don't hurt. Pick up the remote. <laughs> hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.